Hello, beautiful people. I'm filming a video outside today. Uh, you may hear some traffic in the background because it's a busy ass day, I guess. <laughs> I guess people have places to go, um, you know, inside this pandemic. But I wanted to come out because it was kind of windy when I came out here before and I was just like sitting in it and talking to it and things. And I thought, you know, People have, I've even, I've labeled myself and people have labeled me a wind witch, an air witch. And I got to thinking, I need to like kind of elaborate on that because I'm not only an air witch. I'm not only a wind witch. <laughs> um, it's a big love of mine. So therefore there's a lot of magic surrounding the air element. Uh, but I wanted to kind of expand today, you know, a little, little outside magic, a little wind magic. It's spring here. Which, for me, in my state, that means lots of thunderstorms, which, lots of, means like, lots of thunderstorms, lots of wind, just, you know, spring, uh, the spring element is air anyway, so, I'm just feeling the love. And I'm kind of, I'm, I'm like buried in the bamboo, so I'm not getting the full brunt of the wind right now, but I can hear it in the, in the sacred bamboo. The sun is really, really bright. The clouds, it's kind of cloudy because storms are wanting to roll in, but the wind is just, you know, they're whipping them about. Anyway, so wind magic is an area of air magic for me, but there is so much more that I do in terms of air. So, but, so today is just only going to be like wind stuff, wind magic. Um, not fully air, not fully just air, I guess you could say. I guess you could say that I've always been drawn to the wind, always been drawn to the element of air. I think that, that could mean, it could mean two things for me. It could mean that I am an air sign, I'm an Aquarius. So, uh, you know, I'm, I guess I'm drawn to that because it's my zodiac sign. But also, Aquarians tend to be daydreamy, like flighty. <laughs> so, we like to daydream, we like to just like sit and ponder stuff and we like to think. There's a lot of thinking involved with us a lot of creativity and I associate I very much associate all that with the air suit anyway so I've always been drawn to the wind um, I guess in terms of spells and in terms of rituals we could go off of like the correspondences you know of air like what are the candle colors and what are the crystals and stuff like that please go watch my 10 things I don't do in witchcraft video because there's a shit ton of stuff that I do not do in witchcraft and correspondences is one of them I it's very important for me to do what feels natural. Don't do what feels like there's, it's something that's surrounding a lot of rules, something that's surrounding a lot of by the book. Uh, there's a lot of things that I don't do that are, that would be considered by the book. I don't have to have a corresponding color or anything like that. I just want to grab things that I associate with a specific ritual or a specific spell. Um, I guess when you think of wind, you think of, um, in terms of magic, I think of, there's, there's things that I think about, <clears throat> like before I perform said spell or self, said ritual. So if I'm, say I'm inside my house and I'm writing a spell or writing poetry, both are really sacred to me. Words are sacred to me because I think that that's an error element too, is like the power of words, the power of poetry, the, the power of the spoken written word. I think that it, that's like almost in tandem with breath work to me is words and soul speech, which is like, like just innate, you know, innate babble, um, where it's coming from the soul, right? Ooh, <laughs> little helicopters from the Linton tree. That's a wind thing. Uh, thank you for that blessing. So I guess, what is it stuck in my hair? I guess in terms of spells, I write a lot of things inside the house and I will use certain things to, certain things to like get that going on the inside of the house, like where I'm not surrounding the, you know, where I'm not surrounded by wind. So I may light a candle. Lighting candles for me, there's a sacredness in that, but it also like pulls in and makes me feel whimsical as shit. It makes me feel like I'm actually doing something. <laughs> it makes me feel like I'm actually with doing some witchy is like lighting. I'm lighting a spell. I'm lighting a candle and this is the spell work. But I don't have to light a candle. And sometimes I do to really pull in that the practical side of witchcraft. Like, okay, 
you know, lighting it with the lighter, I am performing a spell. <laughs> so that's pretty much like where that lies, you know, where that goes with me. So I light a candle, you know, any candle, it doesn't really matter. And then I sit and I ponder over words, I ponder over the, the organization of the spell a little bit, and then I will come outside to perform said spell. So I guess I'll, some, most of the time I may, some of the time I may do my spells, like my spell, pre-spell, my pre-spell work, inside, like under the, you know, with a candle. I'm, I'm, I've got my pen, I've got my paper, um, and I'm like kind of trying to organize what I want the whole thing to look like. So it's like the pre-work, and then I come outside without the candle. And that's when I work the spell is outside. So there's there's some pre-work to be done in certain terms of spellcraft. Uh, I guess let's talk about the materials I may use outside. Now, if I'm using paper, when I was little, I got this book of how to do paper airplanes. <laughs> I loved that damn thing. I wasn't very good at it, but I loved it. And so if, I'm, if I've got paper and I want to use the paper somehow, or if it feels like I want to use the paper, like I want to continue to use the paper, then I will fold it in a airplane, paper airplane magic way, you know, fold that thing into a, a paper airplane. And then once the spell is done, or once I've finished doing the chanting or the affirmations or whatever it is that I'm doing with it, um, I just cast that airplane into the wind. Now, one thing I'll want to note with the paper airplane is that I don't have to do anything with that after the spell is done. Once it hits the ground, because you know it's not something like a like a balloon where you cast it and it's gone forever, you know. I used to do that, but latex is really bad for the earth, so we don't do that anymore. Once, so it's not something that I let go and it like it doesn't do anything, like you know, you never see it again. So it does eventually land. Not a few spirals come out of it. It does eventually land on the ground. That's it. Then I'll go and dispose of it properly, like throw it in the trash. <laughs> or I may light it on fire inside the house, but it's done. Once it lands on the ground, the spell is done, it's finished. Uh, another thing I've been known to use is um, bubbles. I got kids, we like bubbles. <laughs> bubbles for me uh, speak a lot of like spring, summer magic, like outdoor magic. Um, I guess it puts me in touch with that inner child that wants to like put on wings and flit about the yard go pick pick wildflowers and shit so there's something sacred for bubbles like in bubbles for me so I've been known to just like cast some bubbles like say a few words and then cast the bubbles into the wind that is probably that's I've been known to do that too music is a love of mine now I have a very eclectic I have a I have a very eclectic um, taste in music. It could be all over the place. I can't really tell you like this is my favorite music to play during my wind magic time. Okay, um, I will say that when I come out to perform a ritual inside wind, like inside the wind magic, it, there's usually some music involved, and that could range from anything to hard alternative rock to flute music or to string music. I, there's a, I have a, I have a high, I really, really like string music, by, you know, any kind of string music and flute music. And both of them I associate with the air suit anyway. Um, like vibrationally speaking, I think of them very much in the, in the air, the air realm. So there's, there's, I play a lot of that, but it could be anything that I'm drawn to play in that moment and dancing. Dancing, twirling is an air thing. You twirl around. You know, I know my neighbors think I'm crazy, but I'm really, really not. So, uh, I think if we could, if we, if I could put a correspondence this down, it would be like an actual correspondence that people would associate with the air element is smoke. I've been known to use lots of smoke in my spells and rituals. That's for me. That's incense. That's sage sticks, and that's pipe tobacco. Um, I use pipe tobacco in a couple of my spell work, in like certain spells, but it's it's like sometimes I can use that in place of incense smoke or sage smoke. Now sage smoke for me is very much cleansing, <clears throat> but so is wind magic for me. There's a there's a it, the wind is blowing through me, so therefore it feels cleansing in a way. So, but I I use it in terms of wind 
to let me know which direction the wind is going. Now I have studied the four winds, okay, like the direction, like if we're going off direction, directionality here uh, on the wind, on the four winds, I think, uh, I guess to, to clarify the four winds, it, I associate them like with the same as like the four suits in tarot. So like the north wind would be the pentacles, you know, all about money and the body and materials, material things and things like that. And then the east wind is the sword suit, so the intellectual, the intuitive, um, creativity to an extent, things like that, courage, right? Um, and then the west wind is cups, like the cup suit, so that would be love, fertility, healing, cleansing, things like that. And then there's the south wind, which would be the wand suit, so that's creativity, change, uh, power, energy, things like that. So that's how I've always associated the four winds. But with those, I can intensify a spell. Like if I know which way the wind is going, I can cast the spell into the wind to the north or to the south or away from this way, right? So there, you could think of it in terms of like vanishing or, or manifesting, like gaining and releasing, things like that. So I kind of think of the wind's directionality as well in terms of both spells and rituals. So I guess that's something that you could plug out. I think for me, there's a sacredness in the wind itself that I really don't have to do anything. I really don't have to do anything but sit in it. I feel a sacred friendship, a sacred parenthood, a sacred, a, a sacred like working. I'm working like a sacredness that I'm working in tandem with the universe and the universe is helping me because I'm in it. And I'm, I'm like with me just sitting in the wind, I'm sitting with the universe like we're at a table sipping tea, right? So I, I feel like that. I feel that relationship. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so I don't have to have anything. I don't have to do anything but sit in it. Like I was before I started filming this video, just sitting here letting the wind play with my hair. And on that note, I wanted to share, um, I had written this down because I found it. It was a, it's a quote by Khalil Gibran. And I've been seeing their quotes everywhere lately because I bought their book, um, in a thrift store hall, like I bought, I bought it at a thrift store, and I had no idea that it would that that book and his other works ha, would inspire me so. But it says, and don't forget that the earth delights to feel your bare feet, and the winds long to play with your hair. I'm gonna like paste that into my book of shadows, like for real. It's just like the, if there was ever a saying that said linen that would be it. <laughs> I just like feel like the wind does want to just play with your hair. Just wants to sit there and braid your hair, you know, and not the hair, not the hell, not it the hell up. So there's a sacredness in just sitting. But if I am doing a spell or if I am doing a ritual, I do like to get whimsical with it. That's all it really is. If I want to pull paper out and use my sacred, the sacred word, like the word that is me, like the breath that is me, the poetry that is me, the soul speak the inane babble that I speak, those are sacred. And so if I choose to use that, but if it happens to be on paper that I've organized it, then I'll put it into a paper airplane and cast that shit into the wind. I'm, if I have bubbles laying around, I'll cast the bubbles into the wind. It's just when I feel like I want that extra, that extra push, right? If I sing, now I'm not a great singer, but I've been known to, you know, belt out some stuff from like right here. If I can feel it right here or like coming from my diaphragm, then it feels very like I am pushing it out, you know? And so there's, I've been known to do that. But that's why, it's, that's why music is so important because the lyrics are, are, are beautiful words. So songs and poetry and words in general, words organized in a, in a spell. That's why we take so much time to write our spells is because there's a sacredness in the organization of it all even if you don't choose to rhyme. Um, so I think words are, I guess the most important thing about wind magic for me is that I'm casting my words, my organized words, my organized beauty and power into something. And then I'm casting that into the, into the wilds, into the wind. So there's a power in that. I'm working with the wind to do, to do something, you know, to gain something or to lose something. And 
a lot of the times the rituals and the wind for me is so powerful that I want to come out as a thank you as a look just thanks for being here you know I've had a shit week I just need you to blow my hair around I need to twirl around I need to work with you just to kind of like reset calm me down and then all at once you know all at once calm me down and invigorate me if that makes sense like it's getting rid of that negative shit and then it's inside that spiral it's getting rid letting I'm letting go of the negative shit and it's twirling me back up ribboning me back up with good shit <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense um, another thing that I've been known to make I know that in spell work I do spell craft with like crafting crafting with, with my stuff so that could be a wind chime I love to make I love to make wind chimes um, but there may not be a, like an actual spell that goes along with it I'm just doing it, it again like practical witchcraft like something to do that's going to aid in my witchcraft but it's just going to hang there and be pretty and remind me of my witchcraft and my power and the power of the wind itself so something a little separate but wind chimes and wish trees uh like ribbons i know that i was thinking about pirates um i was thinking about pirates the other day uh, i was watching like one of my favorite movies of all time which is cutthroat island which <clears throat> For a young girl, it was a fantastic movie about a girl pirate, okay? That wasn't cartoon. <laughs> that was huge for me. And I know what you're thinking, that piracy feels like, a, like it would be water, but it's not. What are they on? They're on ships. And what do they have to take heed when they're piloting their ship? When they're, when they're being a captain of a ship? You have to think about the wind to move the ship about. You have to know the wind. You have to know the wind patterns. You have to know the wind direction because of the sails. It's not just water. I think that it's more air than in anything. You're on top of water, you know, but it's more air than it is water. So I think that's why I've always loved pirates. Um, I guess so I thought about pirates and I thought about like ways in which I can use some of their symbolism, you know, like their, like ship flags in spell workings. I thought about that. Um, like when I was talking about ribbons, it's kind of like using ship symbols, like what they would use in their SOS things. Um, those flags, like using flags and ribbons in my air witchy thing. Like I think that'd be cool to use that, but so I've used ribbons, used bubbles, I've used paper, I've used just song and speak and like words in general. That's, that's really important to me. I think that there's a spiritual cleanse in wind and there's, a, and there's an aspect of just free your spirit. And whatever that takes for you to do, do it. If you just want to go out there and sit and let it blow through your hair, do it. If you just want... If you want to do something, work with the wind in, a, in specific ways, think of some ways to do that. Think of some ways to like hang ribbons on your beautiful tree and, let, and every time you look out your window or something and see them blowing or you hear the twinkles of the wind chimes, know that that's the wind calling you out or, or like feel if that is the wind calling you or feel if that is the if it gets you inspired in some way, like the twinkling, reminds you of a song, it links you back to a memory, you know? Like, those are things I think about when I look out at the spell craft work that I've done in crafting, and then use that as inspiration to write more spells and to think of new ways I can conduct ritual in wind and things like that. So, so this is, I guess, a little of my, what I could condense in a video, <laughs> of wind magic but that's not all air is it's not all air magic is for me there's there's a high I have a high love of storm magic but I could make a whole video on that as well and I probably will more go in more more in more into storm season I'll probably make a storm video um when I could come out here safely and uh, be in be in a storm with you guys <laughs> uh let's see 
I guess just leave me your questions. If you have like a specific question on wind magic or air magic, you know, whatever. I'd love to, you know, get my thoughts going on this. So if you've ever had a question about wind magic and want, and want me to answer it, I'd love to. But I think I've covered everything that I like, that I like to do in, in the wind. <laughs> Much love, people.